history of the man born blind and thinking about those areas in our life where we have some blindness or where we need to have our vision expanded. It is good to be with you. Thank you for slip sliding in today and uh, welcome. And I want everybody to repeat after me. Come Lord Jesus. Come Lord Jesus. Bring us spring. Bring us spring. Right? Tomorrow we celebrate the beginning of spring, so may that be our prayer for the week, for Jesus to come with warmer and less snow. But thank you for your presence in worship, and thank you for those who are watching by Facebook Live, for those who will be tuning in later. We're grateful for your uh, presence with us as well. Just a couple of brief announcements. Following worship today, uh, Peter Soli is here with us. Peter, you want to give us a wave or stand up? Many of you know Peter. He is with Dialogue Works, the consultant that has been helping us and our leadership team. And Peter is going to be with us following worship. We invite you downstairs for a time of muffins and fellowship. And Peter is going to have a brief presentation for us. And then we will have time for dialogue with him and time for conversations uh, with each other and small groups. And so I encourage you to come and think about your partnership in the future of Granite Falls Lutheran Church. And today is Peter's birthday. And so we thank him for celebrating his birthday with us. Isn't that nice of him? So uh, come and have one or two of the 96 muffins. Seriously, we got 96 muffins downstairs, so uh, that should be enough for you. Um, and so uh, all are welcome to be part of that conversation. Next Sunday, uh, March is Minnesota. Oh, it, is it is it Lynn's birthday? What? Oh, you want to sing to Peter? Okay, we're going to sing Happy Birthday to Peter. I had these people in the choir loft. I thought they were saying, Praise you, Jesus. But here they were trying to get my attention. So, Peter, we will sing to you. Happy birthday. Wednesday night worship as we continue our theme out of the 
steps, looking at the last chapter of the book of Jonah, and come and learn about what kind of a happy or not so happy ending that book has. Just a number of people to remember in our prayers today. We remember Jim Hendrickson, who will be going to have surgery on Wednesday. Uh, we also pray for Ralph Helgeson as he is living with health issues. We keep in our prayers Dave Hagen uh, as he is dealing with health issues as well. And also uh, we remember the family of Alan Bark Torkey as they grieve the loss of their daughter Heather. If you know of anybody who is not a member of Granite Falls Lutheran, but who we could reach out to. Pastor Deborah and I are looking at holding a new member orientation coming up in the near future, so please let us know about that. Those are all of the announcements. Please stand for our call to worship. We worship as we live in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The shepherd calls. He hears shepherd's voice. The shepherd cares for our every need. We are loved. The shepherd searches for us. We are found. The shepherd leads us through the deepest valleys. We will not be Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And we sing our gathering hymn, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness.
We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, has come to us in Jesus, who by his holy cross has redeemed the world, buried with Christ by baptism into death. Your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. Crossed, marked, spirit sealed, you are raised to new life. May Almighty God strengthen you in faith to live each day renewed in God's call for your life. Amen. Let us pray. When we are distracted by things that cause us to lose track of your call, O oh God, turn our attention back to you, that we might recognize you at work in our lives. Direct the ponderings of our hearts toward where you call us to pay attention. Teach us to regard your work in all creation and to be attentive to what you are doing. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The congregation may be seated. The scripture reading for this morning is from Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 8 through 14. For once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. And take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Thanks be to God. Can you link your fingers so that your 
fingers are linked together on the inside rather than on the outside like this. Can you pick some inside? Okay. So this is the church. I'm going to put the first two up, and here is the steeple. And then we're going to open up our thumbs and see all the people. Isn't that a cool way to think of the church? And then we're going to remember that God makes welcome everybody, no matter what their skills are, no matter, you know, people like me who wear colored tinted glasses so we can read better, and people who may be blind. And so we make sure that things are sounded so that the people have extra hearing. And there are even people who know how to talk with their hands for people who can't hear. I keep wanting to learn that language, but I haven't learned it yet. So what are other ways that you know of people that have special abilities or different abilities? Do you know anybody that, lives, that works in a wheelchair? Yeah? How about people who use walkers? Yeah? And we want to always make welcome so that our church looks like this and has all kinds of people in it. And in this story, it talks about some of them being small and some of them being very big. Oops, I can't get the page to open up here. No. That some of them are so big that you can fit all kinds of people, 10,000 people in here. I prefer churches this size that you can only fit a couple hundred in, but there are also some that you can only fit 20 or 30 in. And some people have church outside. You do that at Bible camp, don't you? You got any here who've gone to Bible camp? Bible camp, you get to have church outside. So we celebrate all the ways and all of the different people as Jesus welcomed and healed the blind man and then sought him out when he was made out welcome in his synagogue. So let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for all the different people with all their different skills and abilities so that we can find you in them. Amen. Thank you all. Now we can head back and I will let everybody else stay seated because you may have noticed that this gospel lesson is why they give us these wonderfully long stories in Lent. But listen now to the Holy Gospel according to John. As we walked along, Jesus saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents said he was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. We must work the words, works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Salome, which means sent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, and how were your eyes open? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes and said to me, go to Salome and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. And they said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. 
Now, it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, he put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, what do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, he is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But we do not know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, but the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, if you would not listen, why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to the one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, you were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they broke him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out. And when he found him, he said, do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sinned. But now that you say, We see, your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. You may have noticed in the call to worship and the prayer of the day and the confession of many mentions of attention and our theme for today is called to attentiveness so stop and think about it for a minute as you listen to that reading and consider how the story expresses different forms of attentiveness it starts out with the disciples' attention not on how wonderful it is that this man is succeeding even though he's blind or wanting Jesus to heal him, but what do the disciples start out with? Who's to blame? Did this guy sin or did his parents sin that he's blind? Being different is the result of sin. Really? That's crazy. We know that. But the disciples give that implication. 
People with disabilities are not that way because of sin. And Jesus reminds them and teaches them that his attention is on God and how God's work is revealed by someone who is different, someone who is differently able. But as soon as the man is healed, what happens with the crowd? Where is their attention? They see the blind man no longer blind, and their attention is to reject the possibility. Well, this can't be him. They have him stereotyped. They have these rules for him because of his disability, and they seem they want to have it stay the same. Instead of celebrating that now he can see, and asking, well, what can we do to help you to understand what you're seeing now? They want to know how, how that happened. How could that possibly be? Because their attention is on this world. And think about it, how often and how quickly we want to know why or what was the motive for anything that happens. Instead of asking, where is God in this? The blind man has his own set of things going on through those changes that he experiences. When he's first identified, he's just the blind man who seems to have his attention as one who is at peace with being blind and begging for a living. And then when he is first healed, he immediately acknowledges Jesus, but his primary focus is on his own actions. He put mud on my eyes, I went and washed, and now I can see. As he has recounted the events, though, to the Jews that demand an explanation, he gets a little more on acknowledging Jesus as the prophet. And then when they tell him he has to come back again, his focus, his attention is even stronger. I'm telling you about Jesus. And exposing the blindness of the Pharisees. As this formerly blind man continues to grow and be a full prophet to the Jews, who the Jews and the, Phar of, and the Pharisees within them their attention seems to be much more on their own power and control, their rules, their ability to have everything. How dare Jesus heal on the Sabbath day? We have rules about how far you can walk. We have rules about what you can do. And healing is not one of them. Jesus, how dare you? Jesus had caused change. And that had disrupted their control and their order. The blind man must not have been blind. There must be some other deal about this. So maybe we could challenge the parents. And the parents are just concerned about being able to have it be safe. They are afraid of the Jews. And they just want to move on in their secure world. They really are not accepting the change in their son, but then again, he's an adult. But that brings the Jews back in again to re-interrogate him. And then they can't really allow their rules to be changed. Instead, they reject the formerly blind man, and they kick him out. But Jesus loves him. Jesus' attention never wavers from what God is doing through this man. Jesus seeks out the one who has been rejected, the formerly blind man. And Jesus loves him. Jesus empowers him to be a new person who has opportunities because he can see. Jesus cares for him. 
But the Pharisees who are standing by, on the other hand, cannot see how the sin in their own lives has blinded them. But Jesus reminds them that now they are blind because they don't see the opportunities. So as you think about your own attentiveness, where are you in the story? How often is your or our attention focused not on Jesus or the needs of the neighbor who is differently able, but on the distractions of the world? How often do we reject change? Especially when God is doing the healing of spirits. So it is we continue to gather for worship. We continue to study God's word, working to keep our attention focused on Jesus, continuing to be open to seeing our own blind spots so that we can make the changes and share the love that Christ shared with the formerly blind man. Amen. Let us join in singing Amazing Grace in the 779. <laughs>
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I'm going to be offering some prayers, but I first just briefly want to call your attention to this cross. You will notice there's um, a band of cloth on it, and that is from, we have a partner synod in South Africa, in the Eastern Diocese. Uh, the ELCA Church is quite strong in South Africa, and our companion synod is the Eastern Diocese of South Africa. So that cloth is there to represent our worldwide partnership in the mission for God. So I will be praying for our companion synod today. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. Eternal God, you seal us by the Holy Spirit, and you mark us with the cross of Christ forever in baptism. Lord, inspire us to be attentive to your love. Help us to be attentive to those who are in need and to strive for peace and justice. We give you thanks for the partnership we share with the ELCA and our companion synod in South Africa. Lord, raise up leaders for the church. We pray, Lord, that you would come into our partnership with them. May we learn from them and learn about them. Thank you for the work you are doing in South Africa, bringing people to the church, and the church is growing. So hear our prayer, O oh God, and merciful God, receive our prayer. Creating God, by your word you have made all things, and you hate nothing you have made. Teach us to perceive the beauty and the depth and the breadth of your creation. And we do pray for the healing of creation, for those places devastated by tornadoes, hurricanes, snow, flooding. Come and bring relief. Come and bring encouragement. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Shepherding God, you lead us beside still waters and you restore our soul. Keep watch over those who weep, tend all who are sick in body, mind, or spirit. Encourage them and journey with them. So today we remember before you Jim Hendrickson, Ralph Helgeson, Mary Bear, Scott Hagna, Dave Hagen, Imogene Weinhold, Nicole Sanger, Gunny Knudsen, Jean and Sharon Santaru, Dar Hansen, Ralph Helgeson, and Jim Hendrickson. And Lord, we pray that you would journey with Al and Barb and their family. Grant them your peace and comfort as they grieve the loss of Heather. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God, our host, you fill us at the table with more than we can ever ask. Equip this congregation to move forward in mission and ministry. Raise up leaders. Guide us as we work together. Guide us as we listen to one, one another. Guide us as we discern your direction. Come, Holy Spirit, lead us and guide us. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift these prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew the whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And take a moment to just wave or greet your neighbor today and share God's presence. our morning offering.
invite the congregation to please stand. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you forever in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Embodied God, at your table, we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. Amen. Receive God's blessing as you go into the week. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. In the name of God who created you, Jesus who died for you, and the Holy Spirit who accompanies you on your journey. Amen. We sing our sending hymn, Be Thou My Vision. Just a reminder, we invite you to come downstairs to uh, have a time of conversation and fellowship and muffins. Thank you.